Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 6 and moving to the part 2 of 6.2 that is specific test tools. And uh, this is also the last tutorial of this particular series. Following that we will be having the sample questions on the chapter 6 and we will be done with the technical test analyst series. As a part of this tutorial, we are going to get started with the next category of the tool, which is tools to support model-based testing. When you talk about model-based testing, we know a little bit from the foundation. Uh, model-based testing is basically a technique whereby a formal model has a finite state machine, which is used to describe the intended execution time behavior of a software control system. It's more of like, you know, when you talk about making use of embedded systems or talking about making use of electrical components like elevators, washing machine, where a software controls the entire set of hardwares. So you have many such appliances around you where on a click of certain operations uh, the entire activity will be executed and that is what you call as model-based testing. And we do have a lot of such tools where generally the components may not be required but the electrical circuit can be tested based on the sensors and a uh, lot of such mechanisms. Commercial MBT tools uh, often provide an engine that allows a user to execute the model in fact and does not really require to write concrete test cases but these models which are created can be very helpful to determine a lot of defects at an early stages and uh, not really required to invest a lot of time in heavy documentation in order to achieve the execution pass rate. Interesting threads of execution can be saved and used as test cases. If you think there is something critical which you need to observe on, you can make use of that. Other executable models such as Petri Nets and State Charts are also supporting MBT. Now what do you mean by Petri Nets and State Charts? First of all, there is a picture on the presentation which gives you a quick look of Petri Nets and State Charts. But to understand better, you need to be a model-based tester or you can also refer to the model-based testing syllabus in more details to under understand about these diagrams. But for your kind information, we have a small definition uh, from the resources on internet that what exactly PetriNet is all about. A PetriNet which is also known as place transition net, which is uh, the place at one point and the transition happening between them, which is just similar to the state transition diagram, is one of the several mathematical modeling languages for the description of distributed systems. It is generally a class of discrete, uh, discrete event dynamic system. And a PetriNet is also directed uh, by partial graph in which the nodes represent the transition and the places is uh, represented by the circles. So that's one of the example what we can talk about right now. But of course, for more details, you can download the model based tester syllabus and understand more. Whereas when you talk about the state chart, it is uh, the primary feature of a state chart is that its states uh, can be organized in a hierarchical manner defining one in the example below in the diagram which you can have a look on. A state chart is generally a state machine where each state in the state machine may define its own subordinate state machines and called as substates. Those states can also again be further having certain substates. So that's some of the basic things which I just wanted to tell you from the MBT. MBT model tools can be used to generate large set of distinct execution threads which can also help reduce the very large number of possible paths that can be generated in a model. So putting it all together when you talk about model based testing tools, it is generally to help the model based testers for such embedded testings or appliances testing to avoid uh, you know, unwanted paths and probably minimizing their test cases with the techniques and it's just like another language to define the test cases to save your time writing concrete test cases. Further next we are talking about another tool which is component testing and build tools. I hope uh, we are already aware of a lot of component tools which are generally called as unit frameworks and we make use of specific to the language. So generally for different languages we do have different unit frameworks for example JUnit, NUnit, PyTest and uh, there are several others which will be very helpful to do the unit test frameworks and help you to do unit testing or component testing for a particular product. Additionally, these component testing tools uh, must uh, have good debugging uh, skill set in 
terms of the benefits and features of the tool which allows the tester to modify the script or also uh, debug the script at any point of time. So debugging tools will facilitate the manual component testing at a very low level allowing developers and technical test analysts to change variable values during the execution and step through the code line by line while testing. So this is mainly for the maintenance run or update mode where you can put a breakpoint and check that where exactly your problem is lying in the program. And for technical test analysts, the unit framework tools are very helpful as a lot of defects and degradation of the non-functional characteristics lies right at the component level. Yes, additionally, when you talk about the build automation tools, often allow a new build to be automatically triggered anytime a component is changed. So generally, you can talk about your build automations on CI and CD tools, which help you to do that. After the build is completed, other tools automatically execute the component test. This level of automation around the build process is usually seen in continuous integration environments. For the last but not the least, we are also talking from the point of mobile application testing where the technical test analyst can again play a vital role from the point of non-functional characteristics of a mobile application. And here the important thing is to understand how do you differentiate between a simulator and emulator. Simulator is a tool which allows you to create a virtual environment mobile like interface by using uh, different resources internally and probably acquiring some of the information or resources from your machine where you're trying to install and just creates a virtual environment which can be uh, just like your runtime environment of an app and you can install the applications and test it in that environment application tested on a simulator are compiled into a dedicated version which works in the simulator but not on a real device so their apk files will be used in order to test the same simulators are sometimes used as replacements for the real devices in testing because it can actually help you and a lot of people not only testing a lot of people generally use a simulator to do a lot of mobile applications testing or even doing certain work which they don't want to do handy with their cell phones Emulator on the other side is a different which emulates your real devices on a computer screen. So once you are done with simulator testing the mobile applications on a simulator, you then go with a real device to finally check that everything is working in a real device or not. So emulator will help you to clone or mirror your real phone through a USB mode to see on the screen of a machine and test everything possibly with the application. So yes, a mobile emulator models the hardware and utilizes the same runtime environment as of a physical hardware. Some common aspects about these type of testing is uh, to talk about simulators and emulators are useful in early stages of development as these typically integrate with development environments and allow quick deployment, testing and monitoring of the applications. Using an emulator or simulator requires launching it, installing the necessary app on it and then testing the app as if it were on the actual devices. Each mobile operating system development environment typically comes with its own bundled emulator or simulator. Third party emulators and simulators are also available to do some of the different activities. So it's just that you have a lot of provisions to create that environment which you need in order to do mobile testing. Not always you need a physical devices to do that job, but sometime initially you can start with simulators and later to confirm and acknowledge everything, you can go for the emulations of the real devices. But yes, to know more about these things, you can always look forward to uh, mobile tester certification syllabus to understand more about mobile testing applications. So. All right, so that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to assist you well and answer your queries. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.